Okay, so welcome to the video presentation that I'm, I'm presenting for the Intro to Computer Science classes. Uh, this is the recap of the first session that I held that actually did some content uh, instead of just trying to get JLab, uh, JGraph set up for you guys. Um, so in this session, we had a recap of the end of year expectations, grading, that kind of stuff, and we did some simple lab assistance. So we're going to uh, move forward here and talk a little bit about what was discussed for grading. Uh, the extension has been made for the third quarter. So now you have until May 1st to complete all your third quarter work. Uh, that includes up to um, the simple lab. So Nerd Wars, the exercises, um, simple lab I am making as uh, a extra assignment so it's not necessarily extra credit uh, if you complete it I'll put it into the grade book if you don't complete it uh, it's not going to count against you so it's not necessarily extra credit it's just an extra assignment that can help boost your grade if say you got a lower grade on one of your other labs uh, so in terms of recursion I am going to provide a little bit of extra credit for that class or sorry for that lab so if you're able to do recursion properly, and get it all turned in, uh, we'll provide a little bit of extra credit for that. Uh, and you have until Friday to get all that stuff turned in. Uh, so in terms of moving forward into fourth quarter, uh, we're going to be working on graphics unit material. Uh, and that unit, uh, everything's going to be graded a little bit different than previously. So it's going to be a three-tier scale, proficient, attempted, or not attempted. And this should be pretty similar to, to what you're seeing in your other classes for the fourth quarter as well. And what that means for computer science, uh, proficient is anything that you receive greater than 80% uh, correct and properly working labs. Uh, attempted will be anything else that you've done um, that didn't quite make 80% correct. Uh, but if you try something, get your name on it, and get it turned in, uh, you'll earn an attempted on it. A not attempted will be anything that you just don't even try and don't even turn in. So these uh, fourth quarter grades can, the only thing they can do is boost your overall average for the first three quarters. There's no way for the fourth quarter to hurt your grade. Um, but you do have a chance to kind of boost your grade up and it can improve. Uh, we're trying to finalize those, fourth, those requirements for the fourth quarter, uh, what it is, give you kind of a range for what we'll consider giving you a boost for um, and when you're in that consideration range we'll kind of take into it into account your attendance your participation how much effort you're kind of putting in are you coming to to the office hours uh, are you emailing us are you communicating with us are you giving your best effort uh, to get these done and then let's say you meet a certain threshold and you're trying we'll go ahead and consider giving you that grade boost. The next step up would be once you've completed a certain number of labs proficiently, we're gonna give you the grade boost. So there'll be kind of a little bar that once you pass that, you're, you're kind of guaranteed to get that boost up in your grade. Um, so there'll be a little bit of a gray area uh, that you'll have to, to meet um, some criteria of, of effort and we're trying to kind of flush that out, but once we have that figured out, we are going to put that down in writing and we will explain it to you. It should be pretty clear what we expect. All right, so that'll be coming soon. And then uh, what we did was talk a little bit about office hours. All right, so office hours, I'm running through Blackboard Collaborate. Uh, there is a separate link for that because each of my classes have different links. So I have an additional link for the office hours. Um, so if you want to attend an office hours session, just send me a quick email. I'll send you the link to that office hours session and keep it, keep the link because uh, it's going to be the same link for any office hours. So just make sure that you, uh, you keep that link. All right, and the class link that you already have, make sure you keep that separate because that will be used every class time, but the office hours will be open. Um, so again, I have set times, Wednesdays from 2.30 to 4, Fridays from 9 to 
and that was determined by the school. Um, but I'm always online at that time. So if you have the link, you can just show up and, and I'll be there and can answer questions. Uh, again, uh, I have additional times we can set up um, throughout the, the week, throughout the day. Just send me an email, we'll schedule a time. We can uh, go into that office hour session link and uh, help you work through anything that you're having trouble with. Uh, but you do need to e email me and set that up ahead of time. It's best to email me the, the day before to confirm the time. Um, it is possible to email me day of and, and see if we can arrange something, but I can't guarantee uh, that I'll be able to, or, to accommodate you if you email me the same day. But if you uh, email me the day before, we should be able to uh, work something out. All right, so that's my office hours. That's how you get a hold of me. That's how we can work through any, any problems you have. Um, so the last thing that we talked about was the, the simple um, lab. So let's just jump to that. And I have this pulled up here. Let's just make this smaller here. All right, so we talked about finding digits. Um, the, the find digits. Uh, okay, so let me just kind of restart that again. Uh, we are looking at the simple lab here. And you can see I've kind of collapsed this all down into, you can see the, the method headers um, that we have here. And the main that was created already for you and written out. Uh, you were supposed to do the factors GCD, prime, and power labs uh, methods. You had to complete these. I felt like these were pretty straightforward. Um, there's not anything too tricky or, or thought-provoking in them. Uh, just make sure that you are taking into account any kind of special circumstances and kind of catching those and accounting for those with your code. Um, and you want to do that before you do the main code. So any kind of special circumstance such as uh, factors, if you uh, had a negative number, um, you wanna make sure your factors are all coming out with positives. So those kind of things. Powers, you know, make sure you don't have zero to the zero power, because that's actually undefined. Um, so catching little things like that, making sure two is coming up prime, but one should come up as not prime, right? Uh, things like that, catch those. Uh, the, the three methods here that you had to complete, find digits, count digits, and down digits, this was a little trickier, uh, and I think a lot of students were having a little bit of trouble with this. So I did want to kind of come in and talk about this, uh, not necessarily um, showing you the code, but to kind of think through some of the processes so that you can kind of come up with the code on your own. Um, and sometimes when you're learning a new language, you want to kind of think in your, in your primary language what you want to say, and then you kind of translate that into the new language that you're learning. And eventually you get to the point where you can start thinking in the new language, and that's what we're all striving for. But again, most of you, this is the first course you're taking on computer science and programming, so you're not quite ready to start thinking in code and in, in Java. So let's think this through in English and let's think about what we're trying to do so we can really problem solve and figure out how to get past this problem. And then we can take all that and translate that into code. So we're gonna start off here with this find digit. All right, so this method, you should understand what this method header means right it's a it's a public method it's visibility is accessible right by any other program it is a static method which means that it belongs to the class it does not require uh, an instance of an object to run uh, and so that would be important for the way it's called right and the notation but it is a static method uh, this int here indicates that it is a return method. It will return an integer, right? And then this is the indicator. This is the, the name of the method, find digit. 
So we use that when we call it. And then inside the parentheses here, we have our two parameters, all right? It looks like it takes two parameters. It takes an int and then its uh, variable name, its indicator name is num. And again, that could pretty much be anything. It's just a placeholder. And then it takes another int, which stands for n, all right? So the first thing here is kind of understand what num and n is. So we know that num, and I'm just going to do this so that it all stays as a comment. So num is, is the number we are checking, right? It's the number we're given, right? It's the number we're trying to define a specific integer in. It's the number we're checking, right? And is the uh, place value or the position of the digit. All right, so num is the number we're going for, n is the place value or position of the digit that we're looking for. So now that we kind of understand what these parameters are, important for when you're coding to know what these things are, are and, and where they go, okay? So over here, uh, let's, let's say, right, I have the number here. This is num, all right? So if I define num as this number, and we can look at making n, uh, defining that as um, the seventh number, right? So if we want to find this, right, that would be this number. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So if we're looking for the seventh number, I want this method to be returning, right? So find digit should return seven. And that's just because that's what uh, we have defined the number as, right? If I was to give you some other number, let's change the number here. And let's say I did In this case, it should return six, right? And that's just how this method should work. So again, starting with a broad picture of understanding what this is trying to do, is trying to find the fifth number in the, of this number, counting this direction. So eight, two, three, four, and then six. This is the fifth number moving in this direction all right so understanding that you got to try to figure out what how do i get to if i know that i want the six in this number how is it that i can access that value we're, we're given this number five hundred and sixty four thousand three hundred and twenty eight and I want to be able to access that six, but I don't know how to get to it. How, it's stuck in the middle of this number. So you have to figure out a way to get to it, how to make it more accessible from when something's in the middle, how do you make it more accessible? And I think you can kind of think about this in terms of um, any type of like, food or candy. Uh, I, I use the analogy of like a, a yogurt in one of those um, push-up tubes, right? So gogurt. And you want to be able to, to eat the yogurt that's in the middle. The only way you can access it is by cutting the top and then pushing it up and, and getting to it. You know, there's also a, a funny kind of little joke about, you know, the two kids are at home and they're being told that they have to share a soda, right? So the big brother grabs a soda, 
takes the takes the top off and drinks the whole bottle of soda. And the little brother's like, "What are you What are you doing? You drank all the soda." And the big brother's, "Yeah, I know. I had to because my half of the soda was in the bottom, so I had to drink it all so that I could get to my half." So that's kind of what we're looking at here is we want to get to the six. The six is kind of stuck here in the middle. So if I want to get to it, I need to get rid of these four numbers, right? Because the six is not accessible. So to get to it, you have to get rid of the pieces that you don't need, right? And so thinking back to the kind of methods that we have to kind of get rid of numbers, right? How can I get rid of some of these numbers? And we run into this idea of a little symbol here, that slash, right? This is the div operation, right? And remember that we're working with an integer, right? And when we work with integers, we truncate, right? We don't move the decimal place when we divide and we div by with integers, we just truncate, we just chop off the last digit if you're able to div with a 10, okay? So what we can look at here is I, if I wanna access that six and I wanna get rid of this, these four numbers, think about divvying by 10, right? So if I was to do uh, five, six, four, three, two, eight, div 10, my result would be five, six, four, three, two. And then I want to take that answer, five, six, four, three, two, and I'll div by 10 again, and I'll get five, six, four, three. And then you're going to do it again, five, six, four, three, div by 10, and my result is the Donald Trump dot, 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 and we'll get five, six, four, and we're going to do it one more time, five, six, four, dot, 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 oh, we didn't divide by 10, now we get to 56. Now we've accessed, we've broken it down so that now we can get to that six. Now we can access the place value, the digit that we're really looking for, the pieces that we care about, right? So what you see here is we just kept doing the same thing over and over again. So I'll leave it up to you to figure out what you do if you're gonna kind of do the same thing over and over again, how can you do that, all right? So that's what we did here. We got to the, the 56. Now, if I want to capture that digit, instead of just chopping it off, instead of cutting it off, what we need to think about doing is using your operator like this, right? Modulo. And what that does, right? This is the, it gives you the remainder. So if I do 56 mod 10 instead of div 10, I get six. And that was the number we were looking for, right? We wanted six and here it is, right? But again, the first you had to do was just keep chopping off pieces, right? So think about how you can get this to run four times. Now let you think about that five right? And that's going to change, right? Depending on what number you insert here at n, right? So make sure you make it dynamic so that it can take care of everything you need. And that kind of uh, gets us to what we need, right? So uh, that is the find digits method, kind of broken down with some problem solving. You need to kind of think about how to code that uh, and think about any special cases, any things that you need to take care of um, in the beginning before you start running this code. All right. 
So let's do um, another one here. And the next one we're going to look at here was the count digits. All right. So again, thinking about count digits, what is it that we're looking at here? And this statement is, is really the same as before. The only difference is this one's only taking one parameter. And this parameter is a double, right? So that's going to kind of change things just a little bit. Number uh, represents the value that we are checking, right? So it's the number of the value that we're checking. And it made this a little too big. So number represents the value that we were checking. We're just checking to see how many digits are to the left of the decimal place, right? Uh, so what we need to do is think about uh, what we did last time with find digits, right? So if I give you some value point here. So if I give you number, if I define it as uh, 45,643.789, I want to return, not six, five, right? I want to return five. This method, if provided with this number, should return five because there are one, two, three, four, five significant digits to the left of the decimal place, all right? If I give you zero, 0.789. It should return zero. Okay. So let's just put this back in there and again make it to return five. So again, how do we how are we going to kind of deal with this number? Um, kind of gives us a little bit of a hint here in our method declaration. We want to return an integer, but we're given a double. So we're not going to be returning number, right? We're going to be returning something else. So before in find digits, we had to divide by 10 and it would just chop off value places as we moved. But the problem with that, right, is that if I have a double, and I divide by 10, right? The decimal place moves. We don't truncate, right? A double div 10, the decimal place moves, not truncate. So if I was to do this, if I do 45, 643, point, 789 div 10. My result is going to be 4564.3789. So, with that being the case, if I keep dividing by 10 over and over again, like I did before, it's just going to keep going, right? Because there's nothing to stop it this time. Uh, we're, we're not going to be able to, to say or to know when to stop because it'll always get closer and closer to zero, but it'll never get to zero. It'll always be greater than zero. It'll never be equal to zero until the computer finally runs out of memory, right? So theoretically in math, it would never get to zero. But in computer world, there's a finite amount of memory space on the computer. So eventually it'll assume that you're, at, you're close enough to zero, that it'll just make it zero, and it'll stop the, the loop. Uh, but what we're working with here, we gotta find a different way around it. And so I've kind of talked about it a lot. What we're gonna do is we're gonna create this into a decimal, or into an integer. 
once we create it into an integer, we can div by 10 and it gets smaller, it truncates, it can just cut off pieces, right? So you should know how to cast a double into an integer by now. Uh, and that's what you're gonna have to do. You're gonna have to cast this into, a, into an integer. That's gonna allow you to be able to operate like we did in the find digits, all right? So I'll, I'll leave that up to you to, to figure that out. But remember, we're counting. You should be counting. And we've done in a number of labs a method for how to count uh, the number of times something happens, right? So you need to set up a loop. You need to set up a counting variable. You need to return that counting variable when you're done. So you got to think about when should you stop, right? When should the loop stop? How do you control that? keeping track of the count and returning that count when you're done, all right? And get that to work, all right? And that would be counting digits, and I'll, I'll leave that up to you um, to figure out and finish up, all right? Now, the last one here that we, we had was the count, or sorry, the down digits, all right? Down digits. Uh, if you notice here is a void method. So that's the major difference between the, the other two, which were integer returns, is that down digits is a void method, meaning it's not going to return anything. You should not have a return statement for down digits. It's just going to basically be printing out the number. It's just going to show us what to do. So uh, number is the num is the number we are printing downward. Okay, so you got to kind of think about how to make this happen, right? And I think, you know, we, we talked about modulo and how you capture a number, right? But a lot of people are having trouble with, let's say I give you a number such as this, Right? If we use modulo, you can kind of take it off and we'll get the seven and then we get the eight and then we get the two and then we get the six and then we get the four. But that's wrong, right? That's not how I want it to print out. What I want to do is I want to capture the four. Then I want to capture the six. Then I want to capture the two, then the eight, then the seven. And I want it to print out downward like this, starting with the first number, starting with the sixth, then the sixth number, then the, is the number, the two, the eight, and then the seven, all right? So we gotta make it go downward in this manner, all right? This is how it should be printing and operating. So if you try to think through this and work through it from scratch, it's gonna be a lot harder than if you think about it using the tools that you've already created, right? So, you know, in construction and, and the repair work, you know, all the job, you could, you could do lots of these complicated kind of tasks and, and jobs that are really difficult. But if you have the right tools, the job becomes simple. It's just a simple task that can be taken care of with the right tool. So it's not always, you know, putting all your muscle and brain power into completing the task, get the right tool, figure out what you need and, and use it in the right way and the task becomes simple. So if I want to do this, like let's think about this, I wanna print the four. Well, printing the four, don't I have a method for looking at a number and then printing a specific value a specific digit within that number and you do it's called find digit right so if i want to find digit i need to know the number i need to know what number i'm checking which i already know that it's it's the same number as what i'm printing down but it says here i need this other piece of information where to look where to start and that's where count digits comes in. Because count digits 
is going to provide you with where to start, right? So this number here, if I want to get the four, the four is in the one, two, three, four, fifth position. Four is the fifth position. And then six is the fourth position. And I always miss my first I. Okay, and you kind of get what's happening here, right? Two is the third position, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And making sure that here we're ending is the first position. Okay, so, so think about that. How did I know to search in the fifth position and count digits has how many, would tell me this is what? Uh, five digits long. So uh, you could use that method to determine how big is my number. Once you know how big the number is, then you can use that information to pull out that very first position, and then the next position, then the next position, then the next position, et cetera, until you get to the last position. So use the methods and the tools that you've already created in a way that makes this uh, method very, very simple. You know, I'm talking like three lines of code for down digits. So if you think about the tools you already have, it should make this a lot simpler. Uh, hopefully this was helpful for you. Um, and that's the video for this week. It was all working on the Simple Lab and talking about the grading. So if you have any questions or concerns, feel free to give me an email. Um, we can talk about it. Uh, that way. All right. Have a good week. Talk to you soon.